Welcome to another edition of Crime News with Mark Solomon. It's Thursday, October 7, 2021, and today we're going to be doing a quick update on Brian Laundry. We're going to be doing a, oddly enough, quick update on the Zodiac Killer, and then we're going to be spending some time on the Colonial Parkway murders. We had some requests to do a fuller look at that. Stay tuned. But before we get to that, don't forget to click like and subscribe with a little bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If you're enjoying this video, you want to be notified of the next ones, click that bell and you will be the first to know. Okay, let's get to it. First thing we're going to do is talk a little bit about Brian Laundrie. Now here, police found just today remnants of a campsite appeared to be used recently in the Florida's Carlton Reserve. That's that gigantic wilderness near his home and that has been closed to visitors and um, also today laundry's father went to the reserve uh, this morning to help with a search said the family attorney Stephen Bertolino he was asked to point out the trails that he had done three weeks ago but now they had thought that his being unseen would make that easier and so that's what's going on in the manhunt for Brian laundry next thing we're going to do was talk a little bit about the Zodiac Killer. If you don't know, the Zodiac Killer was active in the 60s and 70s and was eventually just went away. There was some speculation as to whether or not he died, whether or not he just stopped killing people. But that had been a mystery with the Zodiac ciphers and the letters sent to police. Well, guess what? Yesterday, there was a breaking news from case breakers who say they have definitively pinpointed who the exact identity of the Zodiac killer is. Glenn Barnes says that the alleged Zodiac killer Gary Post had been seen in photographs. This is the artist rendition of the killer at the time, and the police and FBI have already said that they don't believe that this could have been the Zodiac killer, and they are simply saying that Case Breakers is wrong. Who is Barnes? He's a resident of California, attracted the attention of internet users after screenshots of him appearing refer to post as Zodiac as far back as 2018 were shared on Reddit and Twitter. They also claim to identify Post through a series of photographs they uncovered from his darkroom as well as lines on his forehead that matched a police sketch of the Zodiac Killer. However, Riverside Police Officer Ryan Railsback told the San Francisco Chronicle, if you read what the case breakers put out, it's all circumstantial evidence and it's not a whole lot. So whether or not you believe this old, 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 mostly unsolved ring of cases has now been solved by case breakers when the original law enforcement folks say they still don't know who it is, I'm going to let you decide. What do you think? Put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. Next thing we're going to do is talk about the Colonial Parkway's murders. I did an intro about a week or two ago. You can look at that video, but let's do a quick recap. Back in the 1980s in Southeast Virginia, the Colonial Parkway murders were named that because the first couple of people were killed off the Colonial Parkway. That was Kathy Thomas, a Naval Academy graduate, and Rebecca Dowski, a College of William and Mary student. The two of them were dating. They had gone off to park in their car, allegedly, and their bodies were found on October 12, 1986. The next couple who is attributed to this series of murders is David Nobley and Robert Edward. They were found off Ragged Island, um, a little bit away from the Colonial Parkway murders, but the situation was similar. The, the entire circumstance was similar. Then there was Cassandra Haley and Richard Call. His car was found back on the Colonial Parkway and their bodies were never found. Daniel Lauer and Anna Maria Phelps were also killed um, up by New Kent after his car was found at a rest stop and their bodies were found about a month later off an old logging road. There are a lot of theories attributable to this set of murders, but I think the first thing we really need to do is look at where all of this happened and try to decide do they all look related to you? And we're going to look at a lot of the evidence here. So let's take a look at where these murders happened, where the bodies were found. And I think we need to look at a map to do that. 
So here is a good map of the United States using Google Earth. What we are going to do is zoom in on Virginia and the first set of murders we're going to look at is back on October 12, 1986, the Colonial Parkway. Where they were found was the Cheatham Annex Overlook. This Colonial Parkway is a really, really, really rural looking in the middle of nowhere place, trees on either side, limited access, very little traffic, honestly. And people can drive along it. It's a phenomenal uh, road to drive on a motorcycle. And Cheatham Annex, just to zoom out a little bit so you can see this. That is Cheatham Annex. That is the Yorktown Naval Weapons Station. When their car was found, their bodies were in it. Let's take a look at the circumstances of how that happened. So her car was discovered nose down at the site as though it had been tried to have been pushed off the road and into the river. The victims had been strangled with an island line, their throats cut in Thomas's case almost all the way through. Additionally, there was a knife wound on her hand, which uh, so there had been a struggle. Interestingly enough, their bodies had been placed at the rear areas of Kathy's Honda Civic and had been doused with diesel fuel at the site. There were matches found near the parking area where their murder had tried to ignite the fuel but had failed which leads me to think that this was a first attempt. In other words, this was the first set of victims for this um, attributable to this killer. And interestingly enough, in this case, he would try to destroy the evidence by lighting it on fire. And anybody who's ever tried to ignite diesel fuel knows that is not as easy as it sounds. And since the matches were found nearby, diesel was in the car, that was a botched attempt. So what happened next? About a year later, September 20, 1987 at Ragged Island Creek. This is where David Nobling and Robin Edwards were found. The circumstances of that case, interestingly similar. The Virginia State Police theorized that they were killed on the sandy banks of the James, popular with kids. They were bodies were shot at close range and to where they were discovered. And remember, it was raining heavily that night. If you stepped off the path more than a few feet, you would be mired up to your knees in mud. No flashlight was found in the area, and a trip would have been frightening along that area, even if they were there to do what young kids do in those types of places. And it was raining, so there was no way they, they were down there to do anything romantic. He had a girlfriend at home, one that had recently announced her pregnancy with his child. And if they had gone down to that beach, it would have been coerced at the barrel of a gun. And the vehicle had been staged, laid out as bait for somebody to steal, which was the signature of this killer going forward. So in this case, there was no mention of any defensive wounds on either of the victims. But let's take a look at the third missing couple back at the colonial parkway just a little bit down the road from where kathleen thomas and rebecca dowski were found richard keith calls car was found cassandra lee haley was also missing neither of their bodies were found and just to show you the difference in space between these two look at that just down the street from each other let's take a look at the circumstances of that killing. Here, the vehicle was abandoned. The back seat had most of their clothing, two empty beer cans, and the keys were left in plain view in the car as if it was left out to steal. No sign of either of them, just an empty red Toyota Celica. The comparisons of the location of the first Colonial Parkways are hard to ignore. In fact, if you weren't familiar with them, you could be standing in either spot and know which, not know which one you were at. The weather the night of their disappearance had been in the low 40s, and both of them have not even held hands at the party, let, let alone demonstrated any amorous behavior to where they were going skinny dipping together. It was a preposterous claim that just defies common sense and logic. But they were never found, and this was, again, right next to the York River. The fourth couple, I think, is the most curious. Let's take a look at the map for that. Now, on the way towards Richmond, this is the New Kent rest stop. This is where his vehicle was found, but on the westbound side, this side that I've got marked here. Now, interestingly enough, they would have been going the other direction towards Virginia Beach, which is, they, if they had just stopped there, they would have been on the eastbound side, heading towards 
what at the time was Route 44, which headed down toward the beach. But in this case, they were on the wrong side of the road. So where, uh, where, what were the circumstances of their killing? Let's take a look at that. Here, the Chevy Nova was found in the westbound area, parked with a driver's side window, half down, keys easily accessible in a roach clip, easily visible. One clue when they found the bodies was a knife wound on um, Anna Maria's finger bones. The second was uh, her photo locket of her nephews. The criminal behavioral specialists believe that they were totally related. The site had been chosen for a reason, not at random. It was isolated, provide neutral control. It meant that whoever killed them knew the terrain, knew the area, and had picked that spot with forethought. Interesting. So let's take a look at the difference between where the vehicle was found and where their bodies were eventually found a month later. Just down the street and to the right. Now, one of the website authors that I've been quoting a lot here today says that pretty clear, whoever abducted them from the eastbound side of the rest area would have simply gone down the road a little bit taken the first exit made a left turn and then found that logging road so in other words when the killing was over uh, I, i'm po i'm postulating that the killer would have taken the car back to the rest stop parked on the wrong side of the road for the rest stop going west and then stage this vehicle also so that the windows were down keys were really easily accessible so that the vehicle would be a tempting target for someone to steal hence getting rid of the rest of the evidence of the murders so you have eight people the victims of this crime now some of the other theories that i had uh, mentioned in my last video on the subject was that at the time the parkway police were using white ford ltds and it would not have been difficult for somebody to have used a white ford ltd and pulled up behind people getting them off balance thinking that they were being uh, field interviewed by a police officer and when their guard was down then the killer struck Another theory was that this was somebody actually employed with the park police who had access to either active or reserve cars from their motor pool. Uh, there was another concept that had been thrown around back when I was in college that the killer was involved in police science and was going to school for the subject and was a reject from a police academy who was not able to get in. And this was one of the ways that they were getting back at society. So what i would encourage you to do there are a number of websites that i would recommend there's the crime museum website which i showed you earlier there's another one which i think is phenomenal this guy has written a book on the subject which was published i believe in 2018 or 19. this is the area of what the colonial parkway looks like where Kathy Thomas's Honda was found. Notice very green, very overgrown, but that's how it's supposed to be. It looks very natural. Here's another image that this author took in the area of Ringfield, again, in the area where these crimes took place. And here's a view of the water from where a lot of these parking areas were found. Notice how overgrown they are and shielded from view if you just pull slightly off the road. Now, this author has visited all four scenes and has this series that he has put in his blog as a precursor to his book. Here is a crime scene photo of David's pride truck that was left on the scene. This is a walkway to the James River, which is different than what it was back in 87. But again, it shows that in pouring rain in the cold, nobody would want to go in that direction. Nobody. Here's another area of the road and the pathway from the parking area to the river, which again shows to me that nobody would do this unless they were being made to, especially in the dark. And here's a pathway that reaches the James River at the base of the bridge. Again, it, it's not a good area to be in, especially in cold weather or rain, especially with no lights. On the third scene of the Colonial Parkway murders, this is the parking area where Keith Call's car was found. Here's a picture of Keith Call and Cassandra Haley, both students at Christopher Newport University. His book is called Special Kind of Evil and came out July 12 of 
2017. Here's a photograph of what it looks like if one were to try to go down to the river. There are always these little pathways, but they're not by any stretch of the imagination easy to traverse. And a picture of Keith's car that was found. Lastly, on the fourth scene, this is the start of the logging trail where Anna Maria and Daniel's remains were found. Anna Marie Phelps and Daniel Lauer. This is a photograph of the car's interior that they found at the rest stop. There was a lot of note about the roach clip. In other words, did, did they leave the roach clip there or did the alleged murderer put the roach clip there to draw attention to the car? At the time, marijuana was 110% illegal and anybody displaying any sort of paraphernalia would have uh, drawn the attention of law enforcement. Those rest stops were always being um, patrolled by the Virginia State Police and local sheriff and police. So anybody who had a roach clip would certainly have been investigated. And somebody else who was noticing that the window was down, keys available in the car, easy to steal, what would the roach clip could easily have found that they've got a car with potential marijuana in. It, it was an interesting thing to note here. This is a picture as the, of the rest areas as they appeared in 1989 and a crime scene photo where the bodies were found in October of 1989 of the logging trail. Much of the search of the remains had been done from the air, which in such a wooded area was pointless. Note this triangle area. And when I tried to find this triangle area on Google Maps, what I found was this marked the New Kent County Public Works. Notice this triangle with a flat edge here facing this road. And when we go back to this photo, you can see that this flat area here facing this road, this would be north, this would be south, and the area where they were found was here. And you can see that here on this map where I have tagged it. So that's the Colonial Parkway murder. Six people dead, two people missing, presumed dead, and no actual suspects. If you have any thoughts, feelings, or comments about this or anything else we've talked about it, I'd love to hear it. Put them in the comments below. And until then, thank you so much for watching.